Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing if my uh, drive works. Yeah. It's 220. Mm -hmm. And I put a new folder in the drive called June 16th of 2017. <laughs> and um, I put some documents in there from June 16th of 2017. Yeah. And then I emailed those that I had emailed on that day. Um, I'm a little concerned because most of them are actually liable for me going to court um, for the allegation of violating a protection order and cyber stalking. Yeah. Now, um, for those in law enforcement that know that somebody hasn't committed a crime and then you decide, well, it's really not my problem. It is your problem when you get an email during the middle of the day mm -hmm, that was sent from oh, senior center. Yes. Mm. Then I made three additional videos that day, probably, well, it was in June, yeah, maybe after dinner, yeah. And um, I'm not getting any response. I haven't gotten any phone calls, yeah. Now, um, this whole concept of trying people when you have the evidence they didn't commit a crime, yeah. And that you can continue as law enforcement uh, being employed. Really have a difficult difficult time with that concept of employing those that are police and sheriffs and FBI agents and Department of Justice. And that for some reason, mm -hmm, they have no problem obligating people to have to go to mental institutions for knowing that they were um, in a different city than the alleged... Uh, criminal complaint. Yeah. Now, I mentioned this before. It was filed on August 8th of 2017. Yes. Mm -hmm. The last known address, 1023 Kitchen Dick Road. Yeah. Happens to be the same address where the pastor used a picture of my sister, Susan Bowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same address where in 2013, I was received a text message that I, I attempted to contact Mike or Marilyn. Yes. He will contact the mm, the authorities. Yeah. Now, uh, the state of Washington, yes, I think I emailed quite a few of those that are employees of the state of Washington. Yeah. In fact, uh, King County, mm -hmm, various police and sheriff's departments, yeah. And um, for some reason, none of them really think that... Mm -hmm, they can't be held personally liable or um, their their departments. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I sent this from pbudnick5 at yahoo.com mm -hmm. at uh, 3.53 p.m. on Friday, June 16th of 2017. Now, um, chief of police on uh, SC's troopers. Is that South Carolina? Uh, South Carolina's troopers? Yeah. Or um, maybe that's, um, and then there's Mary Yu, the Supreme Court Justice, right? Uh, Barbara Madsen, Supreme Court Justice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the Port Angeles Police Department, uh, Haxton, yeah. Uh, D.R.A.N.D., Cooper, mm -hmm. uh, Chief of Police, yeah. Did you get any emails from me on uh, June 16th of 2017? Mm -hmm. Because I sent some earlier in the day after I posted those 13 videos. Yes, that I was making from approximately 9 a.m. to uh, noon. Yeah, but I hadn't gotten any emails on that day. So would somebody enforce the laws of the United States? Uh, I thought I would give you the videos that are on my Facebook. Uh huh. Then uh, videos 1 to 13, article number. The videos are backwards. Um, I'm, I'm, there's some reason why I'm going to court on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Now, I emailed the same individuals that I emailed on June 16th of 2017. Yeah. 
And um, I feel confident, yes, that it's not cyber stalking, right, when I inform law enforcement of fraud. Oh. Now, did you, did you want to remove your fraud from the judicial system of the United States? Because I'm really concerned that you don't take seriously the laws of the United States and this thought that a homeless man has no rights. I did mention the last known address and um, I wasn't notified of court hearings. Now, maybe tomorrow I need to go back into the August emails coach, and get out the emails that I sent to law enforcement. See, there's a big question of why would I, um, why would I call the chief of the fire department, Dubuck, Monday, December 31st, the defendant to count criminal complaint that accused me of, of being in Britain, Washington on June 16th of 2017. Yeah. And cyber stalking, I am emailing you, mm -hmm. the oath of office, yes, those in law enforcement, <laughs> attorneys, judges, and justices, as well as the mandatory reporters. Mm -hmm. See, the requirement of the law is if you have knowledge of fraud that's being used to kidnap and hold children hostage, yeah, the law requires you. That's what the law says. Uh -huh. Now, um, this whole thought of you issuing a court order. Yes. Mm -hmm. Conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Budnick's own correspondence on the date which he is alleged to have violated no contact order. Yeah. Uh, did you get all the correspondence? Brett Roberts. Did you get every email address? Mm -hmm. Because I had guesstimated it was 2,500 emails, but... It looks like it's closer to 2,000 emails. Um, the state need prove personal service, need not prove personal service. Yeah, we have a real problem with the state not proving personal service. Mm -hmm. See exhibit A? Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no signature of the petitioner. There's no acknowledging the receipt of the copy of this. Yeah. As if she weren't there. <laughs> and you granted her the relief that she didn't request. <clears throat> and you're using that court order. Um, the state needs to prove that the court order was issued according to the requirements of the law. <laughs> and uh, rather, it need only prove Mr. Budnick had knowledge. Yes, I have knowledge of the fraud of it. <laughs> I have knowledge that that you took 48 days to issue it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have knowledge there was no attempt of service. Oh. I have knowledge that you served somebody other than myself. Yes. I have knowledge of the wrongful execution of it when you served me in the Squim Public Library. Now, there's a big difference between um, knowledge of a protection order and then knowledge of the fraud of issuing the protection order. The respondent did not receive actual notice of the hearing. Mm -hmm. The order was not issued in accordance with the full faith and credit provisions of the VAWA. Mm -hmm. See, these prosecuting attorneys, they both said the same thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Calgill? Yes. That just because I have knowledge of the existence of it does not mean that it was issued according to the law. Evidence available to the state establishes a prima facie case mm -hmm. that Mr. Budnick had knowledge of the order and knowingly violated the restraint provisions yes. mm -hmm. on the date for which he is charged with the crime, mm -hmm. accused of the crime. Yeah. Can, uh, can a deputy prosecuting attorney charge me with a crime? Mm -hmm. I think only police departments can as a prerequisite to a criminal charge for its violation. Yeah. Now, as I remember it, nobody read me my rights on June 16th of 2000. Mr. Deputy Prosecuting Attorney, yeah. Um, 
Could you please explain who it is that charged me with the crime? Um, because there was no police officer involved. There was no sheriff. It looks like your motion to, um, your response to the defendant's motion to dismiss. Yeah. Um, criminal charges. Yes. Exactly what police officer right now? I think I'm going to sue you for that, Brad. <coughs> For thinking, yes, that as a prosecuting attorney, yes, mm -hmm. you can accuse myself as the defendant of a crime, yes, but you can't charge me with a crime unless somebody in law enforcement you're getting sued for saying that I was criminally charged for a violation, yes, when no one in law enforcement actually investigated, did a probable cause arrest, yes, be, ooh, ooh, 